Okay, and we are recording. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to uh, my channel. I'm so okay. I know I say it every time. I'm so excited, but you guys, you don't understand. Like this time, I'm really, really, really super happy because one of my absolute favorite people in the world is joining us today. Um, welcome, Tony Weiskopf. Thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come on the channel and uh, hang out with me and my my fans, my viewers, um, for a little while. So thanks so much for being here. Oh, that is a lot to live up to. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't introduce you as the funniest and most entertaining person I know. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I'd keep, you know, keep, keep some suspense going in the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For a long time. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, so Tony, for um, for for those who who may not know you or or, or recognize your name, um, will you please introduce yourself and kind of tell us, uh, you know, who you are and how, like, tell us who you are and what you do that makes you like a creative that you that makes your life creative, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, I'm Tony Weiskopf, and um, I'm the publisher of Bain Books. Um, uh, also yeah, yeah. the majority owner. Um, and so um, I, I don't think of myself as a creative, um, but I love working with creative people. <clears throat> um, I love working with the authors. I love working with the artists. Um, and um, it's, it's so, so in that sense, I have a, a, a creative life um, in that it is, I, I, I like to think of helping creative people doing what they do and, um, and, and reaching, uh, reaching the audience um, that, uh, that, that, that they um, deserve. So, um, uh, so that's sort of me in a nutshell. Um, it's 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 a it's a it's a one word um, job title with a very broad description. <laughs> yeah, right. Also, I find it interesting that you don't describe it or like that you 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 say you don't feel like you're you're a creative person, but you're surrounded by creative people. Because oh, yeah. I think I pretty much disagree with you. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. I, I, th I think of myself as, as helping creative people um, uh, achieve their goals. Um, yeah. So, uh, so, so I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to reach an audience with my goals or my message or my story. Um, I'm trying to help other people uh, reach an audience with theirs. Um, and I'm, I'm including the artists uh, with mm -hmm. this, the, the visual artists, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, cause, cause I think that component of, um, of science fiction is very important. Um, the story, but also the visuals and, and the, the feeling that the visuals evoke, um, in, in the reader. I think that process is important to science fiction. Um, so, so just assume when I'm saying creative, I'm, I'm including our visual artists as well, our cover artists, um, and our, you know, to, to a certain extent, our graphic designers, our cover designers too. I think all of those people are creative. Um, I think I'm helpful. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, and, and it does mean that I have to um, adapt to uh, a, a variety of different um, uh, different styles and approaches and, and, and be flexible enough um, to appreciate the good in different styles and different approaches. So, um, so, so I think I have a mind that appreciates creativity for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that I would almost argue that that piece of it, the having the, the mind that appreciates creativity, um, it, but also the, the flexibility, the adaptability and flexibility piece, I would almost argue that those two together would constitute, I mean, cause you, that's not something that you can do if you're a person with a lack of imagination, you yeah, know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. so I, I would almost argue that therein lies your creativity is it's almost like a, I don't, I don't know if I can use this word correctly. See, like most people, I could just make shit up and, but you know, you'll call me on my bullshit. <laughs> oh, um, oh, you want it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it, it's almost like a synthetic creativity in terms of like, not or like syn it's fake. Syn syn syncretic maybe. Yeah. Syncretic. Right. Yeah. In, in that it, it's a creativity that, that. Uh, of synthesis or of uh, synchronicities. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think you could make a case for that. Um, uh, you know, of course, Jim Bain was the founder of Bain Books, so right. so so the the overall creative direction and vision um, was his. Um, yeah. Again, I appreciated it um, and and I agreed with it. 
um, so that when I took over, when, when he passed away, um, uh, we were able to have continuity of, of that vision. Um, mm -hmm. so, so there wasn't this big break um, in what Bain books meant. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was a, uh, a lovely flow, I think, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To, to, uh, to, the, to the books we selected and, and uh, the art that we used and the, and the, and the aesthetic um, that, that we applied. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you, can, you can argue that Bain books, you know, 40 years worth is, is, is an artistic whole, right? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> so. For sure. I mean, yeah. Why not? Right. It's it's a portfolio, certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. that's fun. That's a fun concept to think about. Yeah. What would you say? What is your favorite? Like you, you mentioned that that doing what you do is completely multifaceted. And I I I recognize that I like we've never sat down and you've never given me, you know, the laundry list of these are all the things Tony has to handle. But just from my observation, it is. It, it's it's just a wide myriad of, of of things. What's your favorite? Like, what's the best part of of being a science fiction and fantasy publisher? But the the best part is getting to get a good book in, lie mm -hmm. down on your couch with your feet up, drinking your hot chai, and 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 losing yourself in a great book. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's the best part. Right. right. Um, is it a so, little extra sweet if it's one that no one else has seen yet? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah but, all right. So, but these days, I am not the first. I have to admit, I gloried in that for a little while. Yeah. Karma's a bitch. It came back to bite me. Everybody has freaking alpha readers and beta readers. I'm like the 20th or 30th or 50th <laughs> person to read a book now once it's turned in and final. Right. right? So, so I don't, yeah. I don't get that pleasure anymore and that's fine. I don't care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can let go of that one. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the best part. And then when you get a piece of piece of art in, that's just, Whoa. Oh my God, not only is it perfect for the book, but this is a beautiful piece of artwork that is going to yeah. be in, in a gallery 50 years from now, um, or 10 or, ne you know, or next year. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, um, that's, that's, that, that's a nice part of my job. Um, and, and and to some extent, the job description was again created by Jim because you know Jim was a uh, a person with a great imagination and a lot of intellect and energy, um, and you know like you know like a lot of us you know got bored easily, right? Mm -hmm. um, so so the job description is a little bit of this and a little bit of a little bit of that. Um, you know, it's some marketing and it's some branding and it's some reading and it's some editing and it's some. Uh, accounting. <laughs> um, it's uh, some personnel management, and um, it's a little bit of glad handing. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of this and a little bit of that. And um, so, um, uh, so for people like us who get bored easily, um, it's a good job, right? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, um, and Jim, yeah, and and so this was a this was an unusual part of the job description. Usually, the publisher having a publisher also be the editor in chief is not is not unknown. Um, the public, it, it's like having the director and producer be the same kind of person, or be, or be the same person. It, it, they they know what the vision is. They know how they want the final um, uh, production um, to turn out. So it makes sense that um, that you know these roles are united in one person. Having the art director also be the same person is a bit unusual, um, but uh, but Jim pulled it off. So I figured I'd give it a try too, um, and and I and I have succeeded mainly in that my art direction consists of selecting the artist um, yeah. for the most part. Um, I, I that that the artists that we have in our stable, um, they're science fiction and fantasy fans. They love um, painting in, in these genres, um, and um, so uh, for, so they don't need a lot of. You need this brushstroke here. You need this sword here. I want mm -hmm. this. You know, you know the, the kind of very detailed art direction that you would think of of, of art director you doing. Um, I don't have to do that because of the people that we the people that I work with. Um, yeah, so, and that's how I like to work. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah empower your people and let them amaze you. That yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, Oh, that would be a fun direction to take this conversation. Like I, I kind of want to put a <laughs> pin in that because I want to talk about leadership with you too, but for right now, um, uh, so I know how you get new 
authors, right? Um, Bain has open submissions. There's, you know, a slush process. Um, you have a slush master general who's super great guy, really talented editor. Um, yes. And then, um, but then you also have the, um, uh, the Bain short story contest, which is kind of like the, the shortcut route to getting your works in front of Bain editors and, and getting noticed um, by Bain. Um, how do you find new artists? Uh, for the most part, we don't use a lot of new artists um, right. that um, every now and then one of them will pass away. And so, so I'm not, I'm, I, I, there's not as much need for um, new artists as there as there is for um, as as there is for new authors. But having said that, uh, um, I look at the Dragon Con um, uh, art show and yeah. I make sure to to pick up cards, business cards there, people that people that I'm interested in. Um, I do portfolio re, uh, reviews. Um, there is an art director at Bain.com um, email. Um, and I'll uh, and and I will go through those periodically and um, and check things out. Um, I'll check out the writers of uh, the future has also an illustrators of the future contest, and I will um, check out uh, the winners of those as well. Um, so um, um, so it is possible um, to get to get my attention as an artist as well. Yeah. <laughs> It's and and word of mouth, you know, and, and yeah, word of sure. mouth, um, yeah. uh, authors um, will will uh, bring me artists um, that they've worked with before, um, either as indies or at other houses, um, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we try them out and see if they uh, they, they uh, are, are able to um, get the Bane spirit across mm -hmm. in, in their art, and um, sometimes we, we we do add people that way, yeah. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I just that's just not something that I've ever thought about. I just know that, you know, I send you uh I send you a novel <laughs> or I send you an anthology and you come back with this like amazing cover. <laughs> and I'm like, cool, oh, Tony did the thing, you know, she she found this artist and and the artist did the thing and then Tony did the other thing and it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of it too is is um Artists don't like to be pigeonholed any more than than authors do. Yeah. Um, so a lot of them is uh, you know, some some of well, they may not a lot of it, but some of the art direction is challenging the artist. So it's like, all right, well, I haven't seen you know what Dominic can do with this genre or this subgenre, yeah. and um, you know, it, it, you know, I, I like what he does here, but you know, can he do this? And you know, a lot of times the answer is, oh my, he knocked that out of the park. <laughs> well, like, howdy, Kenny, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's a matter of matching personalities to books, um, yeah. as well as styles to books. Do the um, artists read the books? Some of them do. Some of yeah. them don't. Most, most of them do. As I say, most of them are science fiction and fantasy fans themselves. They want to read the books, you know, they, sure. they enjoy them as much as, as we do. And, and as an editor, that's sort of my 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 second line right is if the artist comes back to me and says oh i really like this one man this was fantastic then i know oh yeah i did good right yeah it's gonna go well <laughs> right? yeah it, 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 it's it's a good omen yeah. um and uh, so, uh some of them don't um so we don't always have the manuscript in time to give to the artist um in which case we'll give them as much of the manuscript as we have on hand um whether that be a first draft or a few chapters or a vague idea of what the characters look like. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so uh, it, it, de it depends on, on, on where the manuscript is in, in the, uh, in the cycle. Um, sometimes that can lead to really cool things um, where uh, Eric Flint and Tom Kidd would challenge each other uh, where Eric wouldn't necessarily have, he would only have an idea. Tom Kidd would paint it. And then what Tom painted, Eric would incorporate in his story. That is um, one of my favorite stories about that, like ongoing process that those two had. Yeah, 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 absolutely, and and it's and it's by no means the only one. Um, Chuck Gannon has worked with uh, with uh, some of his car cover artists that way as well, um, and uh, and that's you know that's part of what you want, right? You yeah. want that interaction between the visual artist and, and, and the uh, and the writer because um, yeah. they they see different things in the work. Um, sure. sure, and uh, and I think it can help the writer when um, when they see how how other people interpret what it is that they've put on the page. Yeah, yeah, 
I think my favorite, or not my favorite, but I think like my second thing that I said to you when I turned in the manuscript for um, for Down These Mean Streets was, I can't wait to see the cover, yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean, and, uh, and one of the thing that one of the things that that uh, that you do that, uh, I mean, I personally love for personal reasons is the uh, the whole bring the um, if you know, if a if an author is going to be at a certain convention, a lot of times you'll do the cover reveal at the Bain Roadshow at that yes. convention. Yes. Um, you absolutely got me the first time doing that at LibertyCon <laughs> with uh, with the cover to Noir Fatale. And, um, it, you know, it's, I just want you to know, like, that's a thing that we talk about, right? Like you're, especially, <laughs> I don't know about your, you know, your more seasoned, like uh, your superstars, uh, about you know like Larry and and David Weber and all that kind of stuff but uh but like um <laughs> Marisa and Mona Lisa and I have had conversations so for <clears throat> for those of you who don't know Marisa Wolf and uh Mona Lisa Foster are both really good friends of mine Marisa has been on the channel a bunch and um and they both uh have uh, novels coming out with Bain in the next year right um, uh yeah with next 12 months yeah next 12 mm -hmm. months yeah and um um we uh, Bain did Mona Lisa's cover reveal at a convention, and Marisa's like, I can't wait. I hope she does mine at a convention too. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's, that's another one where, in the bad old days, authors never talked to artists. I yeah, mean, we kept them very much separate. But but nowadays, with email and the internet, you can't keep them apart, right? So right. you know, again, especially our artists, um, you know, they want to know. All right, does the dragon have feathers, or is it scales? Are you imagining more a Chinese dragon, or is it more, you know, a Norse kind of dragon? Um, and and I'm like, I don't freaking know. I read that book six months ago. I have no idea, right? <laughs> so, um, so you know, so they they will get together, and they will. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and so sometimes I can't, you know, I, I, I can't pull that fun surprise. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, uh, but yeah, when I when, when I can, it's fun. And I absolutely have gotten Larry and, and David where we're both. Have you? Awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. David the, is so um, much fun to have at the roadshow because David reads a lot. He is a voracious reader and he's read tons of Bane books. So he will pop up with unsolicited um, uh, commentary and reviews of books, you know, completely unrelated to the stuff that he does, just that he's read and liked. Um, yeah. So I love having him in the show. Um, oh, yeah. oh yeah. 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 I've seen, I've seen him do that. Um, you had me do that one time too. I yeah. remember we were at MarsCon and um, Witchy Eye had just recently come out by DJ Butler. And yeah. I like, it floored me. It was so good. I, I still to this day recommend it to anybody. And um, I started talking about it and you were like, well, get up here tell everyone else. <laughs> tell everybody else. Yeah. 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 I had, um, I had uh, Don from Liberty Con do that at yeah. uh, Fantasy as well. Cause he was, he was sitting there. Is it, all right, is that is this lighting better or is the previous lighting better? That's better. This is better. All right, good, we'll keep this. Um, yeah, he was sitting there chatting away to Brandy in the front row, and I'm like, tell everybody, <laughs> <laughs> because he too is a voracious reader and you yeah. know had read and appreciated and had interesting things to say about these books. So, you know, I I, I do like getting readers, whether they're David Weber or you know just just fans, um, you know, talking, uh, uh, you know, talking at the slideshow at the roadshow. That's what the roadshow is for. It's, it's yeah. again for that interaction um, and, uh, and feedback. So, so Casey, you should absolutely feel free to pop up and, you know, talk about, talk about the, uh, you know, your fellow authors that you're, you know, that you've read and you're excited about. Now, not everybody reads outside of their own stuff. Not right. everybody can. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I'll keep that in mind. So let's, so let's talk about the roadshow for a minute then, because, <laughs> it, you know, again, for those of you who are not familiar, um, at a lot of conventions where there's a, where, you know, Bain as a company has representatives attending, um, there will be a panel and it's always like a double length panel. It's like two hours long where, where Bain talks about their upcoming releases, talks about their recent releases, showcases all of this art. How did that come about? Like, why, where did the idea for that come from? And, you know, how has it become the, this? Because it's always, it seems like it's always one of the best attended panels at any convention I go to. It's There's so much buzz about like, oh, you know, I got to go to this panel. And people get mad when they get scheduled against it. <laughs> so, 
yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Uh, <laughs> um, it the, the the first time I remember doing it was in the early nineties. Oh um, wow! Okay, I think it was I think it was ninety or ninety one. Uh, it was not, and it was not the. This is the first time I just remember doing it. And it yeah. was at a, a at a Balticon, I think. I think, um, because then I, I I did a similar one. I think at um, uh, at the Worldcon later that year in the Hague. Um, oh, okay. So so, I think it was a thing that East Coast conventions did because because they could get the New York editors to come and talk about the next year of books. Um, so I don't know who suggested, so it, it didn't, it wasn't organic to us. They, they yeah. said, Hey, do you want an hour to talk about your books? We're giving tour an hour. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, you know, we're giving ACE an hour. We're giving Delray an hour. Um, and so back in, back in the day and why I call it a slideshow um, is uh, it was slides. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it was little 35 millimeter slides, um, in, you know, in a slide deck. Um, and uh, sometimes, you know, I put them in upside down or backwards or whatever. <laughs> and that was that was part of the fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I was always the one to do it. I don't, I don't think Jim was the main presenter. Jim would present a slideshow at a sales conference to our sales force with Simon and Schuster. Right. Um, back again when those things were um, around the country in, and in person. Uh, but I was the one who did it at conventions. Um, and uh, people liked them. Um, I think people, you know, this was also at a time when the art shows um, were getting harder and harder and harder to send art to. Um, mm -hmm. Art was getting, there was a time when in the 90s when art was being stolen um, and uh, shipping art became more expensive. Um, so having original art in art shows was getting harder and harder to find, especially at the smaller regional conventions. Yeah. So being able to show the artwork um, huge up and, you know, on a big screen, people really liked that. Um, yeah. Which is why that's always been part of the show is we show the artwork qua artwork, right? It's like, here's our beautiful artwork. Yeah. Also, here is our cover. Yeah. <laughs> but but here is our artwork, right? Um, so so I think that's one reason why the Bain Road show has kept going. And it's not just a here's a list of our coming stuff, it's all great, you should buy it. Right. 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 Um, although yeah. it's all great and you should buy it. But <laughs> it is. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That and you guys give out prizes too, which yeah, I think, we, yeah, 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 it's the what is it the the drug dealer model of of marketing? First one's always free. <laughs> Jim Bain did live in the in 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 the village when he first came to New York, um, uh -huh. so um, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So much of this stuff starts from Jim, right? That, that, right. that I've just you know continued or or uh, um, you know supplemented, enhanced, whatever. Um, so yeah, so the free books absolutely um, came from Jim. Jim is like, this is this is it. This is the only perk we have. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, publishing is an incredibly low margin business. There is you, you don't have an expense account to pad. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. You, the only the only thing that we have are books. Right. And um, so yes, you should you know you should give them away and and share them and and create more readers. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's what we For try sure. to. Yeah. Yeah. Um well that's that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. The talk to me a little bit about the role that conventions like fan conventions play in I guess your business as it is today versus how it was back when when you first started doing the um the road show back in you know the early 90s or whatever. Um well, it's changed, right? Yeah. You know, so so it's it's been decades now. Um, so we don't do time math on this channel. That was a rule Marisa made, and I've I've seen fit to uphold that. So we don't we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> Marisa is, is so smart in so many ways. 
So, so we're going with that. It, it was a while ago now. Yes. Um, and and lots of things have changed. So, so fandom has always been a a, a percentage of the people who buy science fiction books. Um, yeah. And when I say science fiction, I mean science fiction and fantasy, right? Right. Um, you know, the, the, the big, the big tent. Um, um, so it was going to conventions a, a, as a marketing tool for publishers was always talking to a, to a small but very vocal group of people. Right. Um, so these are the people who voted on awards. These are the people who, um, uh, you know, would, would form fan clubs and readers groups and so on, who would write reviews and fanzines, um, which before Amazon was how people <laughs> right. Right, shared reviews, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the semi pro zines, um, Locus and Science Fiction Chronicle, um, and a slew of others also published um, published reviews. And so it was a way to get in contact with those super readers. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, and that is why we as a publishing company went. Um, it was also a way to meet our authors who were not in the New York area, which was more and more and more of them yeah. um, as, as New York became harder and harder and harder to live in. Um, and so as editors, we would travel around the country and it would make it easier for our authors to have, uh, to have face-to-face -face meetings, which is, you know, which is always good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, which still continues. Which absolutely yeah. still continues, yeah. Um, and I think may, maybe has become a more important aspect yeah. um, um, of going to conventions because the, the, the small literary convention um, it has become a sort of victim of its success. Mm -hmm. uh, and we now have huge, vast, you know, giant, giant tent, not even you big tent, say Dragon you know, mega it's tent. Great. Science fiction and fantasy conventions. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, uh, of which the small literary convention can be a component, right? Right. Um, and 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 that's a good thing, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. So, um, so so conventions as conventions themselves have changed. Um, why you go to conventions has changed, um, but it's still a place to um, to have the face to face interactions that you just generally you know don't get otherwise. Um, yeah. So. I have remarked before in in various venues that um, I for for me personally my my individual experience um, has been that that. I essentially had built my entire career on networking that I have done at science fiction and fantasy conventions. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember there was a, um, uh, like a kind of an op-ed opinion piece on uh, um, one of the, one of the sort of internet blogs about um, <clears throat> how, like, um, you know, do you really need to go to conventions to be an indie writer? And um, the answer of course is no, you don't need to. Right. Yeah, um, right. But um, I wrote a counterpoint article, um, um, which the uh, the author of the original piece um, actually, you know, liked and, and was was glad that I had done so and put it up on on that blog, um, where I was like, you know, in defense of conventions, no, you don't need to spend the money to go to them. Certainly, if you can't afford it, you shouldn't do that. Um, it's not a necessity to being an a, you know a self published author. However. If you ever want to go anywhere else, this is one way to really get out and network, right? And, <laughs> and not just meet your fans, but meet your peers, meet other people in the field, meet, you know, make connections with 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 publishing houses, with artists, with, you know, editors. Um, and I can I can trace back every single opportunity that I've ever had in my writing career to attendance at, at a science fiction and fantasy convention. Um, and so for for me that's that's pretty powerful um you know kind of a powerful mark in the in the pro column plus they're fun right and, <laughs> so. well, you know, they, right they, they can be fun you know? yeah they can, they, be. They can you be you know if, if you know if they're well organized um, yeah um if they have somebody creative um doing the programming yeah um you know the signing panels um and uh 
Um, and if you have the right kind of personality for it, yeah. um, but if you have, you know, but, but, you know, but if you're, if you don't have, or can fake that outgoing, um, you know, people part, it can be excruciating. Absolutely. Um, no, you're, and, you're absolutely right. And, and yeah. again, you know, this is, this is my experience and I'm a pretty extreme extrovert, as you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I love conventions because I love the energy of, of yeah. all of those fans getting together and geeking out about whatever it is that we're geeking out about. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I like them too. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I do I do enjoy that experience. Um, uh, yeah, you know, I started going to conventions when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and um, and going as a fan. And you right. know, for me, it was just incredible, incredible thrill to meet people um, whose work that I was familiar with and whose um, uh, whose art I had seen on book covers. And, you know, here they are, are real people. And, you know, I'm, oh, my God, other people who read this stuff. And again, this was you know, this was a while ago. Right. It was unusual to find people who were like science fiction and fantasy. Sure, that's legit. Um, and. You know, this didn't this didn't really happen until after I came on. I'm not saying I caused it, right? <laughs> but in the 80s, in, in the 80s and 90s, it became clear that um, science fiction and fantasy and the science fiction and fantasy mindset and way of approaching the world had won, right? Yeah. Um, uh, not just commercially, but um, but was you know as, as a way of approaching the future. A, right. uh, a a reasonable thing to do and not crazy kid stuff. Um, right. I think, we'll, I think I will probably live to see the pendulum swing back around, um, but uh, um, and put science fiction back in the gutter where it belongs. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but uh, but it was a different time and, and, and different kind of experience going to conventions. Um, yeah. Um, back then. Yeah. So. Interesting. Well, Interesting. I, I, I've got to see the. And it is hard to go from experiencing science fiction, fiction conventions as a fan and experiencing science fiction conventions as a pro. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's definitely a transition. Um, yeah. My, my husband actually remarked on this because mm. he, I started going to Dragon Con as a fan. Right. And yeah. I brought him along and he's, he's not as, nerdy as we are like he's a little bit nerdy he's like yeah. nerd light right uh, but he doesn't read science fiction or fantasy he plays science fiction fantasy video games that's how he consumes his story right is yep. is through through video games yeah. um and movies he likes he likes science fiction fantasy movies too but um uh, but he he came to dragon con because i asked him to come to dragon con with me and we would go as fans and we would you know have a blast and party it up and do the yep. whole <laughs> dragon con thing yep. um and then once I started going as a pro, he's like, you know, the way that you do this, like <laughs> he, he still comes, he, he, you know, comes as my, as my plus one, arm, my, my husband, arm, you know, arm, arm candy. You can my arm candy. candy. Yes. My man candy. <laughs> um, show him off in his sexy sunglasses all the time. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, uh, I'll tell you about one of my favorite pictures of him ever at, here in a second. But uh, he, um, uh, but he's like, you know, the, the Dragon Con today with you having panels and going as pro is a completely different experience than Dragon Con like the first couple of years when we went. Um, and I was like, really? He was like, yeah, babe, think about it. You know, you get up before 10 if you have a panel. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I was like, oh, that's that's a true statement. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I do. I get up early. You know, I'll go to the yeah. go to the parade, actually, and see it in the mornings because I'm up because I had a panel. You know? Instead of staying up to see the parade. Yeah. Of staying up to yeah. see the parade and then go. I, I used to. I used to be one of the night people. Me I was too. there at three in the morning listening to Jack Chalker and Mike Resnick tell lies back and forth <laughs> until four in the morning. And then and then the real night people would take over between five and six. Yeah. And you know, I was there for that. I was one of them. I don't know. And now I'm in bed by nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I gotta but get I'm my not. walking in before my 10 o'clock panel. <laughs> That's right. I have to get up to go to the gym. Damn it! Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, I, I I do I do miss being one of the night people. I hope that there are night people out there. I assume you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe it's like a maybe it's like a torch passing thing, right? Like when when you get old enough to where you're like, okay, I have to go to bed because I have to be up so I can get my walk in and meet my editor for breakfast. And then because that's the other thing too. I remember uh what it was so funny. The last time I saw you at Dragon Kind, you're like, 
I'm here at this at this convention and all I'm doing is is having meetings over food. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> <laughs> you know, and there's only so many times a day you can eat, right? So, so yeah. First breakfast, uh, second breakfast. <laughs> that's right, right? Like, you know, um, and each of them is a meeting, right? It's like a professional commitment that you have to go to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can't um, have soup, right? You can never order the soup. <laughs> no, 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 it's never a good idea. Never a good idea. Oh, man, that's funny. That's so funny. Yeah. 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 Unless well, you get yeah. ramen. Because you can you can slurp ramen. That's allowed. I've confirmed it with Japanese. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. So now it's a different experience, and it can be hard too. It, yeah, it can be hard for people to make the adjustment. Um, so yeah, yeah, it yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, oh gosh, I had another question, and I got distracted talking about conventions. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Passing, passing torch. I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, no, it was, it was the, it was the, the thought of like, you know, maybe there's another generation coming behind us that are now they are the night people and they're right. making those connections at three in the morning, five in the morning, you know, <laughs> and having those experiences that are going to inform their creative endeavors later on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. I, I hope so too. So. I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. yeah. I find myself, and maybe this is this is a product of of my age. Um, you know, I recently had a birthday, and uh, I keep thinking, like, I find myself a lot of times thinking about my oldest daughter, who she just turned twenty. And I'm like, man, I hope her group, like her people, her age, her generation, um, I, I find myself having a lot of hope in them. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. 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 I do. And, and we were, we were, we were discussing in one of our, one of our chat groups um, about cross generational um, uh, encounters, right? Yeah. Um, places where you're not just stuck with your own generational cohort yeah. and science fiction conventions were one of them Yeah, um, that you could come in at any age you know, you know, nineties to teens. Yeah. And if you knew science fiction or fantasy, you were welcome. Or if um, you wanted to know it too, right. I've noticed that too, <laughs> you know, cause yeah. I, <clears throat> I, I see this at particularly like at Liberty con, um, I'll see people there with their, their teen kids or their young adult kids who are not necessarily into things. Um, but like when I brought Coriel, you know, she, she was not really that much of a science fiction and fantasy fan, but everyone wanted to be like, well, what do you like? Well, try this book, try this book, try this book, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, it circles back to pushers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <First one's free. laughs> yeah you, you don't have to be young to enjoy the cocaine. I mean, book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube cocaine is a metaphor. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, we call it book crack, right? You know? Crack, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and partly it is, right? Part, yeah. Partly, partly, the, you know, what is going on is a, uh, um, you know, a directed uh, change of your brain. Yeah. Um, it's, um, I think, a lot more um, beneficial to you. <laughs> <laughs> than doing crack, sure, yeah, right, right. Then, change, then you know, then changing your your brain chemistry by um, by horrible substances that also destroy it. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> but 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 you know, but there is a but there is a change that goes on, right? Yeah. When you're, you're you're changing the way your brain is wired when you when you when you're doing the act of reading, um, yeah. and you know, and like good exercise, it lasts, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, I, I, I think the metaphor stands, right? Yeah. You know, it, it stands because they are close. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then there's the addictive element too, right? You get that yeah. dopamine hit from mm -hmm. reading an amazing story that just you're yeah. like, oh, you know. Yeah. Um, I was uh, <clears throat> I was talking on another podcast about like, um, you know, what kind of stories do I like to read? What kind of stories do I like to write? And I realized for me, what it really comes down to is. I want a story that is driven by the actions and relationships and interpersonal dynamics 
of the character because that is what I am most interested in, right? And so I and so that's what I write, right? Because I write what I want to read. I yeah. write I want to write the story where, you know, all of these terrible problems are kind of caused by the consequences of the <laughs> of the character's actions and yet it's those cons it's those actions that allow the character to solve set problems too. You know what I mean? Um yeah. and and so when I read a story like that, you know, it just it lights my brain up. I'm like, oh, this is beautiful. You know, this is, this is amazing. Um, kind of, you know, well, I mean, Dave's main character didn't cause all her own problems in Witchy Eye, but that's how I felt when I read Witchy Eye. You know, it was like, this well, is, I mean, this is you know, she could have, she could have stayed where she was, right? That's true. You yeah. Know. No, that's you true. Know. She, she so, did knowingly enter the adventure. Yeah. 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 She, she absolutely did because she couldn't, she couldn't not, right? Yeah. That yeah. that was that was who she was. She you know she you know she had to be true to herself. She absolutely had to leave that mountain. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and and find herself literally because she didn't really know who she was. Um, so and then all of the you know and then and then we get to discover Dave's incredibly complicated, beautiful, beautifully yeah. rendered, um, wonderful world right through yeah. you know it's through her eyes. And then, you know, the more people she meets, the more eyes we get to see. But it all starts with that first step off the mountain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's a good metaphor. The first step off the mountain. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. <laughs> In this case, literally, I think. But yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. First step out of the gate. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's an author, she's an indie YA author that I follow on social media. I talk about her all the time cause I'm, I have a little bit of a, um, a parasocial crush on her, let's call it, you know, cause I, I love her content. I love her videos. Um, and, uh, she does a lot of like author tools and, and things like that. And she talks about it in her, in her video series as um, going through the doorway of no return. Right. And I, and she, I don't think she made that up. Like she got that from one of the, you know, plotting books that she studied or whatever. Um, yeah. But that's the phrase that stuck with me is like, okay, yeah, this adventure has started because, you know, um, Bilbo has left with Gandalf and the dwarves and, um, you know, Lessa has gotten on the back of, of, of Nemeth and is going to bend and weir with, with Flar, you know, like this, <laughs> there's no way back. You, you're in it now, you know? Right. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. And I, I think, you know, just, you know, in terms of craft, it is a more satisfying story if, um, uh, if, as you say, the problems um, come from the choices that yeah. the person makes, um, but then also the solution to the problems comes from the choices that the person makes and, yeah. and the kind of person um, they are. Um, so, um, yeah, I agree. so, you know, if, if you're, if you're talking craft, <laughs> Be taking those notes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I yeah yeah. We I haven't done any like craft videos on this channel. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you guys are watching this. If that's something that you'd be interested in is is some discussions with. Um, I mean, it would be. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if Tony's willing to come back for that, but that would be like a gold mine right there. <laughs> But uh, um, but uh, but let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys are interested in. Um, well, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty laissez faire about crap, right? I, I I don't care how you get me there, right? I I don't you know if I'm snorting or shooting up, it doesn't matter to me. As <laughs> <laughs> so long as you get me there, so so yeah. uh, you know I like a great character centered story but i don't need a great character centered story sure. it can it can be all idea for me it can be all you know it can be all description it can be all, you know it can be combinations thereof it can be you know it can be plot heavy it doesn't matter to me um if you're good enough you can you know so so i am not proscriptive in in my um in my discussions of craft um i am very much a use whatever you can yeah. to help you um, yeah and so that's uh that's really good intel for anyone looking to uh to submit to uh to to bane for um either the short stories or or for the slush pile so um mm -hmm. yeah doesn't matter how you get there just get there yep. Make it a good story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. awesome um so you know <clears throat> i 
as uh, obviously, as you know, I, I have books published both with Bain, um, you know, as, as a traditional publisher, but also uh, on the indie side with, uh, with Chris Kennedy publishing. Um, and I am not alone in that of the authors in the Bain stables, you know, Lydia Scherer has a, has a thriving self-published career. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Marisa also um, publishes with CKP. Um, what are your thoughts about, do you, what do you think about this phenomenon of, of indie publishing, self-publishing and, and traditional publishing? And, and this, I see it as a tendency of more people to try and, and, and do both. Do you think, how, how do you think that's going to work out in, in the future for, for basically is, is that a good thing for sci-fi fantasy fans? How's that going to work out? Yeah. Uh. Well, uh, so, all right. So there's we we have two constituencies here, right? We have the readers and we have the writers. Um, yeah. And um, uh, you know, my general tendency is more is better, right? Yeah. More choices, more choice is better. Um, for the writers, absolutely, more choices is better. Um, yeah. For the readers, more choices is not necessarily better, um, because it becomes harder to find the stuff that you like. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. On the other hand, readers have been overcoming this problem um, since, you know, there have been caves. Uh, right. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't like Fred. His antelopes are terrible. He never gets the horns right. Come here to this cave, right? Um, <laughs> everybody, everybody's a freaking critic, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so um, I, I think that traditional publishing, um, small press publishing, and self-publishing all do different things for the writer um and uh and and i think part of the process that we're seeing is different writers figuring out what works best for them Um, yeah and what works best for them at the beginning of their career isn't necessarily what works best for them in the middle or the end right so just because you've chosen you know to self-publish doesn't mean sorry i'm hitting my Mm -hmm. (laughs) Using my using my my hands here. Your knife hand. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, just because you've chosen one path doesn't mean you're 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 tied to that path and you can never go any uh, any any place else. Yeah. Um. So. Um, so in general, I think it's a good thing, right? Um, traditional publishing uh, does some things, and, and again, when you say traditional publishing, not all publishers are alike, right? Right. Um, yeah, you know, for we, sure. We, we like to differentiate what Bain does from the rest of those people. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the rest of those people <laughs> feel the same way about us, right? Yeah. Um, so, so it's a, um, I, 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 so I think it's a good thing, right? You know, if you, we're trying to figure out, okay, you know, I am the kind of person who absolutely must have hands on every single aspect of my marketing. And yeah. I really enjoy A, B testing. And I want to spend 40 hours a week creating different ads and seeing, you know, this one drove five people to my website and that one drove four and this one yeah. with this kind of stuff. Yeah. would drive me flipping nuts, but I know people who love this. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. And I know um, very, I know very fortunate authors who are married to people like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, there we go. We, we know who we're talking about. <laughs> right. right. So there, 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 are, there are people like that out there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's great. Right. Um, and there are some people who are like, man, I've only ever gotten shitty covers from my publisher. I can't wait until I get to be my own art director. And, and then they are. <laughs> Maybe not their forte, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so it's a process of discovery, and yeah. um, you know, sometimes you know, sometimes it works out, and sometimes it doesn't. And so, being able to being able to have choices again, you know, rather for people to have choices than not have choices. Um, but do we see more and more people going the hybrid route? Yes, we do. Um, do you find that? Um, do you find that that small press publishing or or um, self publishing can be a useful like um, what's the word I'm looking for like farm league type situation for for authors where they develop skills and then 
move into traditional publishing later in 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 their careers, or is it a type of situation where you start with bad habits and you just reinforce those bad habits? <laughs> <laughs> so, so the answer the answer is yes to both, right? Both, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure it's it's yeah. It depends on the author, right? Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Um, I, I think in a lot of ways, um, Indian self publishing is. Um, uh, a lot, uh, a lot like the the days of the early pulps, right? Yeah, when, I've, when there I've was, seen that parallel a lot, and I, yeah. I think I agree with it. Yeah, that when there was a huge market and people were churning out stuff to to meet this huge market, and they needed to do it quickly, and mm -hmm. they and so and so the habits that were reinforced were quantity over quality, um, but you had to have a basic level of quality, otherwise you, you wouldn't, you know. The, the, nobody would buy it. Yeah. Nobody would buy it, right? Okay. Um, and so, uh, and so that's not a bad thing to learn, right? To learn how to do that. Um, yeah. That that is useful. Um, and not everybody um, is a Roger Zelazny who sold his first ten stories that he ever wrote, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> say. Yeah. Yeah, he, he always did say now after I sold my first 10 stories, then I started getting rejections, which was weird to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> right. I, I just, you, you, you send it in and they send you a contract and that's yeah. how that goes. Yeah. Um, so he had to learn how to take rejection, but he did, right? He became a professional author. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, so I think, I think again, it sort of depends on author personality. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you, and you can learn by doing, right? Some people learn by doing. If you don't get feedback that you respect, um, yeah. then your then then the then the um, uh, the reason to change is not there. Um, and reading reviews, reading internet reviews, that way lies madness, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, you can get a sort of general trend, you know, if everybody says, why did you have them wake up at the end and have it be all a dream? That was horrible. I hated that. Right. You yeah. know, if there were, you know, if there's a hundred reviews and 75 of them say this, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's enough data there that, you know, you should probably take a look at that. But most of the time you don't want to look at those reviews. You know, it's just one person who didn't get what you were doing or, right. you know, or it's just, wrong or read a different book or whatever um and so listening to them and changing because of what they say doesn't make any sense either so right. yeah um so yes you can learn how to you can learn how to be a better writer um writing indie or in a in a small press that doesn't have an active editor um uh but it may be harder yeah yeah for sure, for sure. You know, one of the one of the in indie circles, one of the big things that, um, or um, was, I'll, I'll I'll say self pub circles, right? Um, one of the 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 biggest things out there is like, look, you if you're gonna publish your book, you have to get an editor, and if you can't afford an editor, at the very very minimum, get a group of talented beta readers who will be honest with you and and put your book through a couple of iterations of that before you put it out there. Um, and um, it's funny because that that that's perpetually the advice. It's perpetually, you know what people recommend to do. Um, and sometimes I can see that people, you know, have taken that advice and done really well with it. And sometimes I'm like, nope, they just went for it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and sometimes they, yeah, it, it's hard to find an editor who gets yeah. what you're doing. Right. It is. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the, the, in traditional publishing or, you know, or if, you know, you're hiring them. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's hard too because there's so many like, especially like if you look at if you look at Amazon, this is a you know, again this is sort of a an indie self pub centric problem. But if you look at Amazon, there's all of these all of the categories, right? All of these different little subgenres, and unless you have an editor who knows the nuances of, oh, okay, I'm writing science fiction romance, cool. What what does that mean, right? What is the reader going to expect? Yeah. from that they can't tell you the author hey this doesn't work to meet that expectation or this absolutely works you need to play this up more you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and you know and, and we, you know, we have um 
uh, again, I won't name names, but we have a uh, uh, within our circle of friends, you know, people will share editorial um, advice. Yeah. Right. Tony said this. Right. Like and and. And you have to be very, very careful that when Tony said this, she just meant for that author, yeah. for that story. Yeah. That doesn't mean every author for every story. So I, right. I had a case where, where an author who was very promising turned in something that I was like, oh, wow. huh?" And, and it turned out that he had, and it was a he, applied somebody else's editorial instruction to his story when he needed the exact opposite right oh, oh no yeah <laughs> exact opposite um yeah. so 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 we finally tracked that down so um uh, so so somebody who who understands you know who's a great editor for one author doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a great great editor for another author yeah. um and of course editors can adjust you know input depending on you know the story and the, and the time and the the, you know the place and the season <laughs> you right know, yeah you know, yeah you know, as an editor i always try to um, be the story's advocate not the author's advocate right i'm trying to make the story be the best that it can be yeah um, and then my secondary concern is the reader is that i want the reader to have the best experience my third concern is making sure the author survives the process <laughs> 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 we are fragile creatures. It is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but that really is sort of my approach. Is is that so? So if I am at all creative, it is in that trying to 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 where, where I can see the shape of the story. I mm -hmm. can see how it's supposed to go, um, and I can appreciate the effect that the author is trying to bring out in the reader. Um, and, and so I think of myself as a reader's advocate and when I um, when I edit. Um, but of course, as a reader and as a voracious reader, I have to get a constant stream of new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, so I want the author to write me another story the next time, too. So, yeah. 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 So. Sure. Sure. Well, man, Tony, we've been talking for almost an hour Yes, and I actually my my uh, my device is losing power and it's not plugged in. So okay, all right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. This was actually a really cool discussion. Um, something a little bit different for my channel, but I think something that that uh, my viewers will will really enjoy. Um, mm -hmm. Let me know, guys, let me know in the comments. Like I said, let me know in the comments if you're interested in um, more of like a craft discussion. But um, also let me know what your favorite Bane book is that you have oh, yeah. read. And um, if you have not read a Bane book, Tony, please tell them what is coming out that they can and where they can find it. Oh, um, well, uh, we just found out today that indie author uh, John Van Stry uh, has made the final ballot for the Prometheus Award. Um, so Congrats. Summer's End. Yeah, 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 yeah Summer's End. Um, so that's a success story for, for uh, indies to, uh, uh, to, 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 to traditional pop. Um, uh, so I... I Suggest that if you like uh, uh, Highline uh, Juveniles, but The Harder Edge, uh, we'll enjoy Summer's End. Uh, we have, uh, oh, man, we got really great stuff coming up, but yeah. we'll say um, um, Mona Lisa Foster, her new book um, will be out. I know this. I don't know it. I have to look it up. Uh, let's see. Where are you? Where are you? When is Mona Lisa's book coming out? I'm waiting with bated breath because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beyond Enemies, which is Maurice's book, will be out in um, spring of 24. Yeah. And Maurice's book is out pretty soon. When is it? Oh, there it is. Uh, it is uh, October of 23. It's Ooh, ready to October of 23, Mona Lisa yeah. Foster. Um, it's military science fiction, which Mona Lisa did not know. So, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. a planet story. Um, it's inspired by a uh, John Wayne movie, uh, Rio Bravo, uh, and uh, it's uh, uniquely Mona Lisa. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, all right, October twenty twenty. That's got a great cover too on that one. It yeah, does. Dominic Carver cool. is the artist on it. Yeah, super cool. Um, so yeah, so go check those out. Also, um, it was recently uh, release week at Bain. So we've got a new uh, Larry oh, Korea. Yeah, Larry, Larry's new book. 
Tower yeah. of Silence. Yes. Tower of Silence is out. And then um, um, Tim Akers had one out, right? Yes, yeah. Tim Tim Akers Wraithbound, a beautiful Wraithbound. dark dark epic fantasy. Um, and, uh, I think Patrick Childs, uh, hard science oh, fiction. Yeah, um, uh, he had uh, his book out. His, yeah, yeah, his escape organ. His escape organ just came yeah. out um, this week. Yes, thank you. Yes, so those are all brand new. You can you can find those um, anywhere books are sold. Um, you can also go check out Bain.com um, if you're interested in uh, ebook. You can get an ebook directly through the. Um, uh, through the Bain website. And uh, yeah, so um, once again, Tony, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Um, it's really good to see you. And uh, um, guys, if you like this video, give me that Chuck Yeager thumbs up. Uh, it really helps the channel grow. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, I'm Casey Zell, and this is my writer life. We'll see you next time. Now I do the awkward thing where I wave at the camera and then hit the end recording button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.